Uh, my name's Craig and I'm the Assistive Technology Advisor at uh, Call Scotland. If you're unfamiliar with uh, Call Scotland, uh, it stands for Communication Access, Literacy and Learning. And we're uh, the centre of uh, expertise uh, of knowledge in uh, Scotland for um, schools and other areas as well. So uh, you may be familiar with some of our services and products. So I'll just quickly go through the website. Uh, that I've got here. So there's a call main page. That's www.callscotland.org.uk. Um, you'll probably be familiar with the uh, Scottish computer voices, that where you can get uh, Heather, Stuart, and of course now the the KT voice for, for Gaelic users. That's available from the Call Scotland website as well, and uh, also Word to Talk. So that's the free add-in that you get for Microsoft Word. That uh, is a text-to-speech which you can use the voices alongside as well. So some great resources there to improve usability and accessibility for learning materials. Uh, and of course, we have uh, loads of uh, posters uh, and infographs that you can use. Probably the most famous is the uh, iPad apps, uh, Learning for Dyslexia, the Wheel of Apps. And uh, we've been adding to these recently with new um, infographs and uh, a whole range of things. So for you to explore there. If you're unsure of the link, you can just follow the breadcrumb, Call Scotland, download posters and leaflets there as well. Okay, so other resources that are more relevant to what we're looking at today, are accessible uh, resources, or creating, making accessible resources. One useful, very useful site is the Scottish Accessible Information Forum, that's SAFE. Uh, and again, that's just www.safescotland.org.uk. And as I scroll down, uh, just towards the bottom, as well as what I'm going to be doing today, you can see there's some information there on how to um, create accessible PDFs from Word, how to apply headings with styles and accessibility checks. So some of those things we'll be covering today as well. So that's a, a useful site. Also, um, the RNIB has some really good, useful information on make your information more accessible. So that's www.rnib.org.uk and then make your information more accessible. So some very good st uh, uh, stuff there. Also, I'll be looking towards the end of the session, looking at how we can use DAISY. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with DAISY, DAISY stands for the Digital, Digital Accessible Information System. And it's a way of, um, I guess, creating accessible information for people who are blind, visually impaired, and use uh, navigation to navigate through different documents such as ebooks, uh, daisy books, these types of things. Um, one of the products I'll be looking at later on is the Save as Daisy uh, Worden. So, this is a, an add in you can get for Microsoft Word where you can add it in, it checks your document to make sure that it is accessible. And you can then convert your documents into what's called Daisy, Daisy Books, and I'll be demonstrating that as well. So that's the conversion tool, is the Save as Daisy. Uh, one of the readers that you might be interested in is uh, AMI, and that's a free open source Daisy playback uh, developed by the Daisy Consortium, and I'll be demonstrating that as well. Okay, so that's um, just some resources that, to help get you started. Um, so why accessible docs? Well, obviously, the Legislation Equality Act, we're required to make reasonable adjustments for our students. Um, but, you know, actually, it's just good practice. Um, I think, and hopefully, as you see, as we're going through creating the Word document, it actually makes you more efficient when you're using Word. And it's really, it's just, it's the right thing to do. It's the best thing to do. So for this webinar, I'm going to show you how to take a Word document from scratch with no accessibility that's built in, to one that is accessible. So uh, feel free to work along as I'm going through it, but I'm afraid I won't have time to help out. So uh, you can maybe look back on the uh, webinar recording to see how, how we put things together. Uh, then I'll show you how to export the document into other formats, um, so you can get an idea of how the elements that we built into Word then follow through into other formats, such as PDF or even the DAISY format. Uh, typically, we're thinking about visually impaired uh, screen reader users, um, but I think it benefits um, other users with processing difficulties. But actually, it, accessible information, accessible documents benefits everyone. So um, I think that's probably the reason why uh, it's good to see. 
So just to get started then, here I have two Word documents side by side. One has accessibility built in and the other one doesn't. And just um, looking at them, you wouldn't really know, it's difficult to, to tell um, what the difference is between the two, which one is accessible and which one isn't. But uh, as we go through, uh, you get a, a better idea. It's Some of these are more hidden away and they'll only be, they become you only, I guess, get to see them as when you're maybe using this or hear them as when you're using a screen reader or something like Daisy. So um, if I just bring up uh, this one here, okay, so this is the accessible one that I'm using. And, you know, what is it that's, that makes it accessible? Well, the first thing is if I just go to home and I'm going to click on my styles box and just scroll down here. So I can see my headings, okay? By clicking on here, what I'm doing is I've actually built styles and heading structure into the document. Um, so this this allows um, someone with a screen reader uh, just to sort of help to, to navigate around the document, document more easily. If I go to heading one, you can see as I click on heading one, it's also changed just in the style box there. So they're just sitting up there in the ribbon. You can get access to them really quickly. It's not, not rocket science, very easy to use. Let's go down to attendance, and you can see that's a level heading, heading two. Uh, so you can create these level headings. Now, one of the, I mentioned earlier about making you more efficient. Well, one of the reasons why it does make you more efficient, if I, for example, go to, let me see, level heading two, we've got there. If I was to select that level heading two and select, um, all instances of that, what I can then do, you see it's, it's just highlighted that text, it's ignored all the content, and what I could then do is go in and modify and make those changes. So you're not having to scroll through all the documents, you're just having to then change the bits that you want just by selecting uh, and doing that. It's the same, would be exactly the same with just the, um, with the, the normal sort of text that you have. You could do the same thing, just find out where the text is and make those changes. It would ignore the headings, so you can just quickly make changes to the documents. So that's one thing that makes um, it accessible. And if I tab or click onto the View tab up here, and I now click on Navigation pane, the other thing it's done is within the navigation, it allows me to navigate. So those headings now become a way of, of navigating through through the document. So just two things, just by adding those headings, make a big difference. Okay, so what else is there in this one? Uh, well, the other thing we've got in here is on this image, if I uh, click onto the image and right click onto the image and go down to the bottom where it says format picture. Let's just get rid of this so it's not so cluttered. Okay, I'm wanting to choose this one here where it says layout and properties. So by clicking on Layout and Properties, what I've done is I've added uh, what's called an alt tag, an alternative text tag. So for someone who's blind, who's visually impaired, you can't maybe see the image, they don't know what the image is. When they're using their screen reader, the screen reader will interpret the information on the screen. Now there's lots of debate about you know when to add this. And I guess the, the, the rule of thumb is if the information of the image is conveying important information, then that's when you would probably add something. So it might not be that that information is, is really important. But if we maybe scroll down to this one here and do the same thing. Now there's lots of information on there about the numbers of visitors to the library. Now that is just an image. So when the screen reader reads that, it would just see image if nothing's been applied to it. But because we have that built in, you can see we've got a title for it. And we've got, we've just really conveyed the information that's, that's in there into the description and I'll demonstrate the screen reader reading that out, that information out later on. Um, so also um, you can see rather than saying click here we've got a, a logical uh, a logical sort of URL built in and by highlighting highlighting that URL just up there let's go into up to insert and hyperlink. Uh, let's see well that's more of a an email address I've got in there. Let's maybe find a hyperlink that I've, I've built in, maybe one at the top. So one of the things to always 
avoid is when you're doing hyperlinks is to avoid click here because uh, again I'll, I'll demonstrate that shortly so if you go to insert hyperlink you can see there's the address and in the text to display I've written I've written out okay so visit the college library uh, website to find out more and I've added a bit of in in additional information in the screen tip here so in the screen tip I'm just maybe saying something about the library website provides a range of information on our whatever. Okay, so if I say OK to that now, and when I hover over that, you can see the pop-up menu adds that information that I've added. So there's lots of lots of additional information that you can provide to people. So good for sighted users and good for non-sighted users. Also, other things you can see, you've got page numbers, so that's fairly straightforward. That's just under the, the insert menu. So that's, uh, let me see, insert. And then we would find the page numbers. Here they are down here. So you could then insert the page numbers. Again, that helps to improve the navigation of, of the document. Also, something that this document has built in, which helps to aid navigation, especially uh, if it's a long one, is you can see I've got this internal navigation. So I've got sort of go to top type tags built in. So if I highlight um, go to top and I go to my hyperlink, what I've essentially done there, instead of having an external uh, link or uh, an email, I've used placed in this document and I've just clicked on the heading structure that we created where I want this to go. So if I say OK that now, now tap onto that document. Let's just try that again. Tap onto that and that takes me back. So we've got internal navigation as well as the navigation here. So it just gets really easy to use, particularly if it's a longer document. Uh, the other thing we've got built in, you can see I've got a, a table of contents. Now, if I just quickly delete those contents that are there, okay? Again, because we've got that structure built in, what we can now do is go up to uh, References, okay, Table of Contents, and it's just using the contents there it is there okay now that's exactly the same structure as the headings so now table of context it's a dynamic table of context it can change as you change the the, um, the, the, the headings that also changes so just by navigating in there so loads of really good stuff that's available in word just just by that but if I minimize that and go to my other document. So this is the one that doesn't have anything built in. Um, I can then go, let's see, to uh, View and to Navigation Pane. And you can see there's no navigation built in there because essentially this is something I used to do a lot myself where I would just click on that, make that bold, size 14, make the next one bold, size 12, and so forth. And it just isn't the right the right way to do things. You really need to start using structure, styles, and headings, those sorts of things. So um, if I go back to home, you can see the heading styles are up there. But there's a nice little shortcut that you can use. And that's by using Control, Alt, and 1 for your top headings. So if I press on the keyboard, Control, Alt, and 1, that gives me heading one, and you can see the heading on the left hand side has appeared under the navigation. Let's go to the next one. I want that to be level two, control alt two. That's the next one in. And then we work our way through the document. Again, we make this maybe three, three, and so forth. So you've got that structure, and you can just see how quick and easy it is to build that in. Okay, so that gives you an idea of some of the things that you can you can do with with the document. If I minimise this one and bring up the one I was using here, um, one of the things you've got built within Word is an accessibility checker. So that's just built in. If I just go into File and uh, Options and Customise Ribbon, you might have to click on All Commands and look for the accessibility ribbon that's in there and that there it is there accessibility checker and add it to your document and what it does if I just if I check that document okay so there's the the one the non-accessible one and it's telling me I'm I'm missing alternative text on those pictures and that there's other things going on there as well if I close that down 
and let's bring up the, the other document. Let's do that the checker for that one as well. Let's go to the home one and do that check. Now it's telling me uh, no accessibility issues found. Uh, people with disabilities should not have difficulty reading this document. So that's that's a good sign that that document is is fairly fairly good. Now that built-in one is okay. Uh, it's not very robust, I would say. I mentioned earlier about the, the Daisy add-in. If you're really wanting to um, look at something that's much more effective, I just go to File. So that's the, the Daisy add-in that I showed you earlier on. Let's go into Options again. And again, um, let's see, I want to go to Add-ins. So I've already downloaded it and installed, and it's in my Add-ins. And if I see, hopefully here, if I look through, there's the Daisy add-in. Click on Go. Just say OK to that in the box and OK. And now I've got a new tab called Accessibility. So I have, you can see along here, it's much more, um, many more features on here uh, where you can also do a validation of the document. So let's just quickly it wants me to save that. So let me do a validation of that. And it just validates the document. And it contains, this document contains validation errors. So well, that's interesting. Let's see what they are. Okay, so it's telling me that there's some text missing there that I need to add. That's not too bad, though, I have to say. So the other thing is once you've, once you've added that kind of add in there, the, sorry, the uh, accessibility, one of the features it has is this feature here at the end to say save as daisy okay but i'll come back to that shortly but just to make you aware that it's there because the next stage I'm, what i'm going to do and i'm going to take this document i'm going to go to file i'm going to go to save as uh, and then i'm going to just going to browse to my desktop and instead of saving it as a word document i want to save it as a pdf so if I just then go to save as, into PDF, choose a PDF. Now, when you choose as a PDF, you have this other box appears uh, called options. And if I click onto options, I have uh, an option that says include uh, or create bookmarks using headings. So we've created those headings and now those headings are available, will be available in the PDF. So say OK to that and let's just save that. I'll give it time to open. OK, let's just magnify that up a bit. So there's the um, table of contents. Now, if you notice, if I hover over this, hopefully you can see there's the alt tag that I that I earlier, so that you can actually see it in the PDF. So there's the additional information that's in the alt tag. Uh, equally, just to the left hand side here, we've got these bookmarks. And again, the bookmarks are followed through so those, all those elements that we created in Word have now followed through into the, P, into the PDF. So you're making the PDF slightly more accessible uh, uh, as well, or building in accessibility into that. So that's a PDF version from Word. I mentioned earlier the other one is Save as Daisy. So what I can do is I can Save as Daisy. I'm going to do this one here, or let me do um, try this one here. Let's check that. OK, let's just see, save that. And I'm going to choose Full Daisy. OK, uh, to a notebook. And off it's going to go. But I can see you, you can put some information in there. You can give the publish, the, the name, the author, that kind of thing. And then you click on the Translate button. I'm not going to do it just now because it takes a bit of time, but I'll show you how it ends up as, a, as a, 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 an output. You then click on Translate. It'll ask you, where do you want to save it? And then you pop it in there. So how does that look once you've saved that? Well, if I just open up the file, I mentioned this one earlier on was uh, Ami. Okay, that's the free open source one. So here's one I created earlier. Loading. Sidebar has focus. Section. Anyone wishing, under special circumstances, to increase. Pause. Okay, so you can see now it's that same document. Uh, let's. But now I have these navigation panes, and it's using the the navigation Attendance. just to navigate around. Right, hopefully. After innovation, the library has experienced a significant increase in the number of visitors over a two year period. 
the number of visitors to the library in 2014 to 15 averaged 48,000. Between 2015 and 2016, visits increased or paused. And there you could see there that the, the DAISY has taken the information that we've put in Word and that's lying behind that image and it's reading back to the user as well. Um, of course, you can do things with the document as well, is that you can increase the text size, you can change colours and all sorts of things. So, you know, quite good for maybe learners with literacy type difficulties that might be needing uh, some extra help to uh, read documents. Okay, lots of stuff in there that you could do, change colour backgrounds. So, um, I can see I'm just almost at, at my time. Um, there's just one last thing I'd just like to show, and uh, it kind of it's indicative of how you create um, information and how it, something so simple can be so accessible or inaccessible. Now, down here, I've got um, a kind of a web page, and you've probably come across this yourself where you can see you've got click here, click here, click here, click here. So, how, how would the end user who's maybe using a screen reader actually see that? Well, I'm just going to use the uh, free um, open source MVDA screen reader just to show you. I'm just going to bring that up. Loading MV. Welcome. Well, oh, oh. reading is easier to okay, and save it will start time reading. in Word with new buttons that but show I'm going up to press when you the, um, to change shortcut. the way a picture fits in your Elements list, dialogue, to view, level zero, click here, one of five. Okay, so just for a minute, I just imagine you're putting yourself in, in the place of someone who has a visual impairment and you've come to a web page and you've used the shortcut that you would use on your screen reader to navigate around. And this is what you get. So if you just close your eyes for a minute, okay, this is what you're going to actually hear. Click here to five level zero. Click here to three of five level. Click here to five. Click here to three of five level. Click here four to five level zero. Select this link to find out about creating meaningful links 5 of 5 level 0. And then you find that meaningful link that has some meaning. If closed, Equally, see if I go right. to this one where it All has about video, some video accessibility video provides built a powerful in. way to help you prove your point. Elements less dialogue to view. Okay, find so out here's more the links. about video. Guidance on making your document look professional. Help with producing accessible themes. Now, 3 of 5 level 0. It just makes it so much easier, uh, so much more meaningful. What? Same on the headings. headings. This has got headings Type built in as well. All of make, making your document look professional. Themes to a four level. Save time three or four level. Up, L, close. Notif, not, okay, Intel. let's just close off. Okay, oops. So the web page was essentially just something that I made from Word saved as, as an HTML file just to demonstrate. Obviously, wouldn't advise that.